What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. This is my second installment to my two-part series for color grading your DJI Air 2S D-Log footage. In the last video, I went over the importance of getting the exposure and your settings correct in camera so it'll be less difficult to color grade in post. But in this video, I'll show you a basic technique that you can use while color grading pretty much any log footage. And this technique will work in pretty much any editing software that has color grading tools. And as I mentioned in my previous video, I'm not a professional at this. I'm learning color grading on YouTube just as you are. So uh, to the beginners out there, if I can do it, you can definitely do it. I also want to mention that it's not just one way to color grade. So what I'm about to show you will definitely be useful for someone who's learning color grading for the first time. And you can use these basic steps as a foundation to build upon your color grading skills. So in this video, I'll go over the difference between color correction and color grading. I'll explain a little bit about the scopes that I use. I will then go into how to properly set your exposure, white balance, and your saturation within your D-Log footage. Then we'll get into the fun part by adding a custom look to your footage using a LUT. But before we get started, if you find this content useful and you like drone reviews, tips, tricks, tutorials, and cinematic videos, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell so you don't miss any of my content. All right, so I've laid out a few of my favorite clips from the last video. And so what we need to do is open up our workspace. So I'm going to click here on window, scroll down to workspaces, and then color and effects. This opens up the effect panel and also several uh, different uh, scopes here. Now I don't use all these scopes, so what I'm going to do is rearrange this by clicking on view. And what we have here is the Luma waveform, the vector scope, and I also like using the RGB overlay waveform here. So a brief explanation of what these scopes do. Uh, the Luma waveform is a visual representation of your overall exposure in your shot. With the shadows being here on the bottom, the highlights here on the top, and your midtones somewhere here in the middle. So if you were to extend your shadows past zero, you basically be crushing your shadows, meaning you will be losing all your information or the dynamic range in your shadows. Also, if you were to stretch your highlights above 100, you'll be clipping your highlights and losing all of that information as well. Next we have the RGB overlay. This is pretty much similar to the Luma waveform. However, uh, this represents all the color channels, red, green, and blue. Now you can use this to properly set your temperature. So if there is more red at the top of your waveform, that typically means that your shot is warm. And just the opposite, if there's more blue, that means it's cool. Next we have the vector scope. This pretty much represents all the colors in your shot. And the center trace here uh, represents how saturated your shot is. So the closer it is to the center, less saturated it is, and the more that it's uh, extended out towards the edges, the more saturated it is. So before we color grade anything, we first need to do a color correction. Now the difference between the two is uh, a color correction is basically bringing your footage back to its natural state. Uh, your Rec. 709 uh, color space. And then a color grade is basically an overall uh, customized look that you want to add to your footage, either manually or with a preset or LUT. So we need to do the correction before we do the color grade because we need a foundation uh, to build you know, your color grade on. And what I'm going to do is start out by using adjustment layers. So I want to put two layers down, one for my base layer, and then one for my final grade. Then I'm gonna stretch them out all the way across all the clips. Now, if you don't have any adjustment layers, you can also apply your corrections directly to your clips. So Final Cut Pro doesn't come with the adjustment layers. I will leave a link in the description below to where you can find a free one and then download it to Final Cut Pro. So now we need to open up our color grading tools. 
So I'm going to click on this first layer. And then I'm going to click on this triangle icon up here in the corner. And by default, I have it set up for the color wheels. So we have the global wheel that adjusts everything in your shot as far as the saturation, the exposure, and the hue. We also have color wheels for the shadows, the highlights, and the midtones. And then down below, we have a slider for the temperature. And to adjust the green and the magenta in your shot, we have the tint slider. I personally like using the color wheels rather than using the other tools that they have in uh, Final Cut Pro, such as the color board or the color curves. And if you're working with Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, you should have similar tools. So before we move on, if you are enjoying this video or find it useful, or even both, uh, please give it a like. Uh, this does help YouTube to push it out to more people like you who are searching for content just like this. So now we can start making our base corrections. And the order I like to do it is first adjust my exposure and contrast, and then my temperature, and then lastly, give it a little saturation. So I can start out by adjusting the shadows by using this dial here on the right hand side and dragging it down. Now keeping an eye on the Luma waveform, I'm dragging the shadows all the way down to uh, close to zero as I can without crossing zero. And then I will adjust the highlights by using the dial on the right and pushing it up all the way close to 100. Meanwhile, I'm still looking at my footage as well, just to make sure it does look right. And you can also adjust the midtones just to give a little contrast here, which I'm going to dial down the midtones just a little. So I'm now I'm going to adjust my temperature. As you can see in the RGB overlay, the blue is a little bit more prevalent here on top. So I'm going to adjust the temperature just a little bit, make it a little bit more warm. and just bring these lines here on top as close together as you can just to make it look or represent the actual uh, temperature of the time I was shooting. All right, that looks about right. So now that I got my temperature correct, I can start giving it a little bit more saturation. So I'm gonna use the global wheel here and use this dial here on the left and push it up just slightly to give it a little bit more saturation. Now this all is personal preference on how saturated you want your footage, but I don't give it too much, but I give it just enough to make it look natural. So that's pretty much it for the first clip. Now I'm gonna scrub over to the second clip. And as you can see, the adjustment layer stretches out all the way across all the clips. So they're gonna have the same edits. Now this looks pretty good. Uh, these shots were taken pretty much around the same time, uh, but I can make a couple adjustments and just to split this up, I'm going to click on this bottom layer here, break it apart. And that way I can individually adjust each clip now. Now I'm going to pick a spot in this footage where I think I should make my adjustments, which would be right here, just to make sure the highlights and everything aren't blown out here. So I'm going to stretch the highlights a little bit more and the shadows look just about right there. In the midtones, I may just lift that just a little bit just to make it a little brighter. And then saturation is pretty much right about here. So uh, the temperature, I'm fairly satisfied with the temperature, so I'm just gonna leave it where it is. Now the next clip looks pretty good, but I'm gonna lower the shadows just a little. As you can see here, I have a little bit more room to stretch the shadows down just a little. And the highlights, I may wanna bring that down just a little. As you see, the fringes here are just stretching past 100. So I'm just gonna keep it right there. And the midtones, midtones are pretty good. So I'm gonna leave it right where it is. 
but I'm going to give it a little bit more saturation just so it can match the other clips there. So you want to make sure all your cl clips are relatively close, especially if you're filming around the same time of the day. And all my clips look pretty consistent across the board. So now that we have our base correction done, now we can move over to the grading part. So what we're going to do is open up our effects panel, go to color, and then choose custom LUT. What we're going to do is click and drag that to the first adjustment layer, the adjustment layer on top, and just drop it in there. And then we're going to click this film strip here, which reveals the LUT effect that we just dropped in. And we're going to choose our LUT. And we're going to choose the autumn log LUT because this is basically fall colors. So autumn log seems to be appropriate. And as you can see, when we first apply the LUT, it looks like crap. So what you would do is go here to the mix. I like bringing it down to around 25%, 25 to 30%. And that looks pretty good. So if I click this on and off, you can see the difference. Might want to bring this down to around 25%. That looks pretty good to me. Also looking at the scopes again, everything looks fine. Nothing is clipping or crushing. Uh, this here, maybe the shadows may be crushing here. So what would I, I would do, go down to the bottom layer and then make the adjustments on my color wheel and just raise the shadows just a little bit. So you get a little bit more dynamic range over here in the shadows. And then also looking at some of the shots, it seems that there's a lot of red in the midtone. So I'm going to bring that down. And this is based on your uh, preference. So I'm going to bring the reds down just a little bit in the midtones in this shot. So what I would do is go to the midtones. So what I'm going to do is drag this away from the red down towards the blue. And as you can see, by the RGB overlay is reducing the red in the midtones. And that looks a little bit better. So be mindful when you're making these adjustments, these are subtle adjustments and that looks a little bit better. So I just need to make a few more minor adjustments. There you go. Okay, now that we're all done, let's see what we have. All right, so thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, if you are just getting into color grading, uh, this is a great place to start. Uh, this is just the basics and there's a lot more to it. So we went over how to color correct and color grade uh, using a LUT. However, you can uh, color grade manually without any LUTs or plugins. So if you are interested in learning how to do that, uh, let me know in the comments and maybe I can get a video out on that as well. So if you missed the first installment in this two-part series, uh, it'll be right here. But in the meantime, go ahead and check out this video you may like, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Peace.